loading and then sharing the screen and we go oops okay one second okay so this is G two hundred and today is February third twenty twenty one. Right, yes. And today we have quiz two. Starts at three exactly. So make sure just before three you log into your blackboard. And today we will do discrete random variables families, namely. We'll do uniform and binomial. So let's start. So last time we were talking about discrete random variables, characterization. And we talked about four different ways of characterizing the uh, discrete random variable. The first one is the probability mass function, which is defined as the probability that my random variable x, which we write as capital X, equals a certain value. So f of x just distributes the value on f of x. And we have capital F of X, which is the probability that X is less than or equal to X, which we call cumulative distribution function. We have mu, which is the expected value of X, and which we can calculate by summing or averaging over all possible values of X. We multiply each value by by its probability. And finally, the variance, which is V of X, which we also can write as expected value of X minus mu squared, and which we can calculate as expected value of X squared F of X minus <coughs> mu squared. So to calculate the variance, you need to, to know the mean, because the variance is just the expected value of the square of how far you are from from the mean uh, on average uh, and do we have this in uh, the quiz those three are in the quiz and uh, the last one last one no yeah thanks okay as promised i mentioned last time that variance will not be in the quiz so the first three only also recall Which, what we mentioned last time, we recall that we said mu or the mean is a measure of location. So it tells me the location of my random variable. Sorry. Uh, is a measure of location. It tells about where my random variable possible values are and the variance whereas the variance is 
sigma square is a measure of variability or what we mentioned last time, the spread of a random variable. And in future quizzes or in in midterm, I can, for example, as I did last time, I can give you two random variables, plots of two random variables. I can ask you which one has a larger variance, which one has a smaller variance, and so on and and so forth. So we did this last time, and we will have a quiz on this today. So this is done. And today we will be focusing on families of discrete random variable. So in this course we will do, we will learn in details about two discrete random, four discrete random variables, namely uniform, binomial, geometric, and Poisson. And then we'll switch to continuous random variables and we'll know, talk about details about uniform also, exponential, and uh, Gaussian or normal distribution. So what do we mean by families of discrete random variables or families of random variables in general? What's good about science is that it's always the case that uh, we benefit from previous science and we build on it. So scientists have articulated. So people have been studying random phenomena for like uh, generations or probably hundreds of years. And over the years, people have noticed that there are some random phenomena that repeat. So we have certain kinds of, of random experiments or random phenomena which can be described by a certain way, a certain mathematical way. So people or scientists have wrote down or articulated several distributions for different random variables or for different random phenomena and the beauty of this is that they have come up with expressions for their f of x, capital F of x, mean and variance, so that you have a library of random variables. You just need to study the random experiment or the random phenomena that you face and to map it, oh, this fits the uniform, this fits the binomial, this fits the geometric. And once you do this mapping, you have the expressions for the mean, for the variance, you can calculate any probability related to that random experiment as we will see in the in the examples uh, to follow. So, and articulated uh, for different random phenomena and found out their small f of x, capital F of x, mu and sigma square so that they are ready to be used once we map the random phenomena to to any of those families again still don't worry if this is still not very clear in your mind it will be clear once we talk start talking about those families so let's start with the first symbol random variable which is the discrete uniform distribution. So discrete uniform distribution, very simply, we use it to model 
any random experiments that results in equally likely outcomes in which all the outcomes have the the same uh, probability okay which is very common thing to happen so a random variable. is that the bell shaped curve was that bell shaped curve no the bell shaped curve is outcomes will not have the same probability and it's a continuous curve we'll see it probably in two weeks Come on, okay. So a random variable X has a discrete uniform distribution if for each of the N values in its range say x1 x2 all the way to xn they all have the same probability do they also have the same mean What do you mean they because have the same mean? They're all, they're all the same values, so I'm assuming they are they have the same mean. Okay, let's let's be careful with uh, what we yeah, the, the words that we say. What I mean by that I did not say they have the same values. They have the same probability. Okay. The n values have the same probability. And next the values themselves, we have, we say the random variable has a mean, not the value itself has a mean, okay? When we talk about the mean, we talk about the mean of a random variable. So the random variable will have one mean. The values are just outcomes in the range of, of the random variable, okay? So I'm saying this because in math, we have to be careful when we, what do you mean by what we, what we are mentioning? So basically, we can say basically uniform random variable is used to model experiments with what we say equally likely outcomes. And Throughout this course, we talked about a few examples of equally likely experiments. Can anyone remember or uh, remind us with coin, which one? Dice. Tossing a coin or throwing a dice. Yes, tossing yeah. a coin, I have two outcomes that have the same probability. Throwing a dice, I have six outcomes. Each one has the same, the same probability. So, yes. So, for this random variable, what will be my f of x? f of x is simply 1 over n, where n is the number of possible outcomes. So this is the probability mass function. Small f of x of this random variable is given by, by this expression. So, for example, examples in tossing a coin, how many outcomes do I have? Two, doctor. Two, right? So, in this case, f of x equals one half, one over n, which is one over two. So, this is the this is the probability of head and probability of tail. They have the same probability. In throwing a dice, we know that n equals, how many outcomes do I have? Six. Six, right? 
then my f of x is what? 1 over 1 over 6. So the probability of each outcome is 1 over 6. Very simple, right? This is straightforward, and we probably expected that. And we knew that information even without taking the probability course. This is very straightforward. Okay. Also, if X is a uniform, is uniform between A and B, between two numbers A and B, where where A is less than or equal to B, then we can show that mu equals, which is the expected value of X, equals just A plus B over 2, and variance, which is V of X, is given by b minus a plus 1 squared minus 1 over 12. So the equation for the mean and for the variance is given by those, those two equations. Of course, you don't need to memorize any equation in the exam or in any, uh, any quiz that we might uh, give. Uh, we don't test your memory, we test your understanding. So, if you need any of those, we'll uh, allow you to have uh, a formula sheet in the, in, the, in the exam. So, what does this mean? So, let's say, for example, for the, let's continue with the dice example. So, for the dice example we know that what are the possible values of x x can be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 so in this case the lowest number is a the largest number is is b so what's the mean of a uniform distribution What's the mean? Okay. No, this is the equation. No, we just a, apply a, the equation. A, a, a plus B or two. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so it's one plus six over two, which is seven over two, which is three point five. Okay. So one one of you, yeah, anyone is smart, and you are all smart, mashallah. One of you might say. How come the mean is 3.5? It's not even a number. And I cannot get, when I throw a dice, I cannot get a 3.5. How come the mean or the average of the output is 3.5? And simply we can answer. I think that means it, uh, the, the values would be around uh, 3.5, which is uh, 3 and 4. Yeah. yeah, or you can simply say the mean value need not to be in the range of the experiment. The role of the mean is not to, to give me which outcome is more probable. It's, the role of the mean is to tell me the location which is close to the center of the of the random variable and the center need not to be in the uh, part of the of the uh, outcome so for this specific case number, yeah? yeah need not to be a whole number or need, need not to be part of the range of the random variable even abdullah go ahead um doctor now we know that uh, the mean which is the average is what is most likely to be the outcome right no it's not it will tell you the location 
of the center of of the random variable. Or so it doesn't mean which one is more likely to happen. No, especially in the uniform. In the uniform, because all they have the same probability. So I cannot say that three and four are the most common outcomes, right? But somehow, okay. thank you, doctor. Yes, somehow it tells you if I uh, uh, if I have another example in which I have a certain experiment that is have uniform I have out outcomes between uh, whatever one and a hundred I can get this experiment can give me one or two or three or four all the way to 100 so if I uh, and this was like the prize that you 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 can get you there's a bag with 100 papers and each paper has a number which you get you can win one real or uh, hundred real or two real, five real, or so on. And then I I come across you and I ask you. I tell you, give me, tell me in one number. Where is the what's the location of the prizes? How much I probably I would get. Tell me if you tell me one real, you are not telling the best about the uh, competition. If you tell me 100, no. But if you, if you tell me 50, I will know. So 50 is, if you tell me the mean is 50, so I would know it's around 50, more than or less than, probably from both sides. So the mean always tell you the location of, of, what you are, of what you are doing. So if you plot f of x, if this is for, the, for this example, uh, Majid, go ahead. Sorry, I don't fully understand what is the purpose of this mean. Is the purpose showing that this has the most probability of coming? As in, if you know they are all equally probable, but if you do it a lot of times, this is the region of more most outcomes. As in the bell thing which uh, Ibrahim mentioned earlier. So if, if I'm you sorry, average, you if you average, I mean, and if you average, yes, because you will get the six and the one, and when you average the six and the one, it will be in the middle. But that does not mean what I said is that does not mean four or five or three are the most uh, most uh, probable events that you will have. So this is uh, this is the average. In other distributions where we have other, if you have, for example, a distribution that looks like this. Let me put aside. If like we probably we gave this example last time. So if this is zero, assume that I have five and minus five. This have probability of one half and this have probability of one half. What's the average? The average is zero, right? If you calculate yes. the average, the yes. average will be yes. zero. Yes. Yes. But you outcome is not zero. Outcome is either five or minus five. But the 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 average will tell you where is the center of the of the random variable, not necessarily the outcome itself. Even if you have 100 at minus 100, the, the average is, is zero. Fine. So continuing with our example, what will be sigma squared? If I tell you what's the variance of, of uh, throwing a dice? So you don't need to, one way to, to calculate the variance is to do what? You can do it summation of x squared f of x minus mu squared right you can do it this way so it's and then this is tedious one squared times one over six plus two squared and so on right as we did before or now we can use directly the the formula so b minus a plus one b we know b is six minus a is one plus one squared minus one over over uh, 12, so 6 squared, 36 minus 1 is 35 over, over 12. And you can f right away find the, the variance of the, of the random variable. Okay? So if I ask you in a homework, prove 
that mu equals a plus b over 2. How can you prove this? Um, we can solve a specific question with the two, uh, the two equations, and if we get the same answer, then it's proved. Of equally likely outcomes. Yes, for this, for uniform distribution, if I ask you to, to prove that it's mean, if I have a uniform random variable between A and B, then its mean is A plus B over 2. So anything, if, you, if I ask you to prove anything, just go to the definition. So you go to the definition. You know that mu is summation of x, f of x, right? That's what we know. And then we know that x goes from a to b. So x equals a to b, x, f of x. And what's f of x? How many numbers do I have between a and b? Four. How many numbers? Four? Yeah, and the dice, I mean, we have four. No, including a and b. Six. But in general, in terms of a and b, how many numbers we have between? From two to infinity. A. Yeah, Shabab, please be careful before, before uh, answering. So now, between one and six, how many numbers I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six numbers between one and six. How many numbers I have between two and ten? I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine numbers. How many numbers I have between 100 and 200? I have 101 numbers. It's always the case that we have A, uh, we have B minus A plus one. So this is N. This is the number that you have in between a and B. Try it for any integers. How many numbers do I have between 7 and 10? Beautiful, doctor. Uh, yes, makes sense. 7, 8, 9, 10, four numbers, which is 10 minus 7 plus 1. So, if you want to prove this, mu is summation from x equals A to B, x times 1 over n. We know that f of x is 1 over n, so 1 minus uh, B minus A plus 1, which is 1 over b minus a plus 1, summation from x equals a to b, x. And this is something that you can find a formula for, and you substitute, you will end up with a plus b over 2. Try it at home, and you'll find out that this is, this is the case. So a uniform distribution is simply the simplest distribution that you can encounter and uh, very easy, very easy to deal with. Fine. Second distribution that we want to talk about is the binomial distribution. And to understand the binomial, binomial distribution. We need to define what we call the Bernoulli triangle. So what's the Bernoulli triangle? Bernoulli trial is very simply, uh, by the way, one asked on the chat, quiz uh, after the class, no, quiz, as I mentioned, starts at 3. It will start at, at 3 o'clock, okay? So what's a Bernoulli trial? Bernoulli trial is an experiment 
random experiment, let me say. Random. Random. Experiment. That can result, that can result in one of two outcomes. So it's a random experiment that can give me only two outcomes. Which we denote as success and failure. So I will call one outcome a success and one outcome a failure. It's up to you which is your success, which is your failure. It's totally up to you. Second thing, the probability to be a Bernoulli trial, the probability of success, of to have a success, does not change between trials, does not change from trial to trial. And also, trials are independent. So, let's, let's think of some examples of Bernoulli, what we can say Bernoulli tries. Example. Give me a random experiment that has only two, two outcomes. Something that you can do. And tossing a coin? Head toss, or tails? Yes, tossing a coin. For example, you are interested in getting a head. Then you will say head. You will denote head as success with tail as your failure. What's the probability of success? That's what's important. We'll call the probability oh. of success from a, also denoted as P, small p. Let me say small p, not capital P. So P is, in this P is one half. Any other example of an experiment that can result in, in two outcomes? That's life. Hmm? That's life. Life? Life uh, you're living. Calling someone? I, I can't. Jannah or Jahannam. It's a random experiment, is it? I don't think it's random. If it's random for you, you are gambling in this life. Be, be uh, trustful in your God. Be and uh, work for it and be trustful, inshallah. Medical operation. And I hope uh, none of you will be in Jahannam. Neither me nor you, inshallah. Okay. Uh, like gender of a baby. Right? If I ask you to go <laughs> to a hospital, what's it depends on what's your success? And my success to have a daughter. <laughs> I, ha I have uh, sons and daughters, and believe me, and you, uh, we are guys, and we are not the best. <laughs> daughters are uh, more Jesus peaceful. Uh, so it depends, yeah, it, uh, you define your success. I will not write anything down. Define your success. Also, throwing a dice can be a Bernoulli, but uh, in Victor, what sense? Yes. Someone said uh, medical operation. No, no, it's not. Yani, these things that you have control over are not random. Uh, okay, maybe testing for COVID, for example, in those days can be a uh, a random experiments because you, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, if you say at home, it's not random, but if you are experiencing your normal life, 
you mix with people, then testing for COVID might be uh, around any symptoms, of course. So throwing a dice and uh, for all the we get a price, yeah. no getting a number, for example, less than less than three, less than three, or equal to less than three. no less than three. So if you get one and two, this is a success. If you get three, four, five, six is a failure. So what's your P? What's your probability of success? Um, doctor, sorry, one question. If you throw a dice, and if you get a number less than three, this is your success. If you get three or more, this is your failure. So what's the probability of your success? 50%, one over two. No, one or, one or two are, is the success. Three, four, five, six is the failure. Oh, three. Oh, two out of seven? One over three. Two out of six, sorry, sorry. Three. Yeah. Majid, you have a question? Um, doctor, yeah, like, uh, in these kind of experiments, shouldn't, like, the success and failure be equally uh, possible? Like, no. in this case, it's not equally possible. No, it's not. should not be. I did not okay. mention anything about Perfect. being the same. Okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, this is a Bernoulli trial. So now back to our distribution. What's a binomial distribution or a binomial random variable? Um, Doctor? Yes? If, if I like, for example, uh, shoot a ball and I wanted to get into the goal, does that, uh, can I consider it under this uh, example? Yani for, for a famous player, not you, yani you're not a famous player, but for a famous player, like mm -hmm. uh, whoever Messi or whatever, and they studied his history. They found that usually it's seventy percent of the times he scores when he shoots a uh, a ball. Then yes, when he shoots, then uh, it's a Bernoulli trial. Success is point seven, failure is point three, and this p is based on his history. Okay. Okay. Fine. Binomial distribution is. Basically, repeating uh, Bernoulli trials n times and counting the number of successes x out of the total trials. So if you, if you, uh, tossing a coin, if you, if I ask you, go and flip the coin 10 times, but before you starting uh, uh, tossing a coin 10 times, I, you can using Bernoulli, uh, using binomial distribution to calculate, what's the probability that you have only one hand? or three heads, or five heads, or ten heads. So it tells you can calculate the probability of having certain number of successes out of, of the uh, total number of, of experiments. Okay? So in the gender of a baby, if I ask you go to the hospital and check the uh, ten different rooms who got babies yesterday and tell me what's what's the uh, genders they have. If your success is the boy, and for example, in Qatar, we know that the chance, based on history, the chance of having a boy is 0.6, and having a girl is 0.4, then we can calculate what's the chances that all of them boys, or all of them girls, or any certain number of, of uh, successes based on your success criteria. Okay, so binomial distribution is defined as f of x is n choose x, p to the power x, 1 minus p to the power n minus x, where x can be 0, 1, 2, 
all the way to n. What's the maximum number of successes out of n experiments? It's n, right? The maximum, if you repeat that trial 10 times, so you have a maximum of 10 successes. What's the minimum successes you can, you might have? Zero, so it's possible that you get to repeat the experiment n times and you get so again here here p is probability of success n is the number of trials and small x is number of successes and always remember, number of successes in a binomial distribution, this is the random variable. This is the random thing that you have. Number of trials is fixed. I define it uh, in advance. And if you can, if you look deep, let me put also a box around it. If you look carefully at the, always try to think why the distribution is given by a certain formula. If you look deeply at it, so P of, P of X is simply probability of having X successes. If B is the probability of success, what's the one over B? One minus B, sorry. If P is the probability of success in each trial, what's one minus B? What's the complement? Probability of failure, right? Yes. Probability of failure. So one minus P to the N minus X is the probability of N minus X failure. So if you will have X successes, for sure, you will have N minus X failures and n choose x is what we have seen before is the different combinations of the successes what does this mean let's do an example i think things will be clear in an example example Uh, the chance, let's say the chance, this is, uh, I'm reading now an example that I have, the chance that a bit transmitted through a digital channel to be received in error is 0.1. So you send bits one by one, and at the receiver, the chance that you would have the bit in error is 0.1, okay? Assume that transmissions are independent and let x your random variable be the number of received bits in error out of four bits sent. And the question is find probability that you will have two error out of the four. So uh, let's understand the, the problem. You are sending bit by bit over this channel. And at the receiver, the bit can arrive correctly 
with probability of 0.9 or arrived in error with probability 0.1. And we are interested in finding the received bits in error. So what's our success? The error. The error, right? We are interested in watching the error. Receiving a bit in error. So P is 0.1. So. Generally, what's what, what are the possible outcomes of this experiment? Your sample space. Sample space can be if uh, let me before writing the sample space. So if you this is the transmitter. Let's say. So I have with the probability 0.9, I have correct bit. Let's call it C. Or with probability 0.1, I have error bit, which is, let's say, error. So your sample space for four bits, for four bits, you can have all the way from all correct, 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 error, uh, whatever, all the way until you have all in error, right? Any one of those can be a possible uh, scenario at the receiver. And now, what we are interested, we want to calculate the probability of two errors. Two errors can be what? Two errors can be EE, CC, for example, EC, EC, can be E, C, C, E, can be C, E, E, C, can be C, E, C, E, or C, C, E. You don't need to do all of this. You can, right away, if you know your probability of success, you know that you want to calculate probability of X equals two, you can just go and use the formula. Here, this is clearly binomial distribution because I have fixed number of trials, I have four trials, and I have probability of success is 0.1, and I'm interested in finding probability of x equals 2. So probability of x equals 2 is simply f of 2, and this is, we know that this 4 choose 2, n choose x, so 4 choose 2, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x, and you just this is 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial, 0.01. This is 0.9 square, 0.81. And then you can, if you calculate this, you will get 0 0.4, 0 0.0486. Six. This is the probability to get two bits in error out of the four. As you can see, this is low probability because the probability of each time you transmit, the probability of getting a bit in error is just 0.1. So what's the probability? If I ask you, what's the probability? Of having no error. No error means probability of X equals zero, right? Probability of no error is this event. What's the probability of this event? If we don't know the expression, what's the probability 16. of having C, 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 C? Hmm? 1 over 16. 1 over 16. No, they, are, they don't. These are not equally likely outcomes. Oh, uh, um, right? Yeah. So this is what's the, when you st first start, what's the probability that when you send the first bit, you get it correct. What's the probability of that one? Point 0.9. Point 0.9, right? Type. What's the probability of also getting the second bit correct? It's also point 
third one is also we, these are independent we said they are independent so it's 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9 times times 0.9 so let's see if this the the rule gives me this so probability of x equals zero again n over x so four zero and then 0.1 to the x and then one minus 0.1 to the four minus x 4 over 0 is 4 factorial over 0 factorial times 4 factorial. This is 1, and then this is 0.9 to the 4. So this is 1 also. So this is 0.9 to the power 4, which is exactly what you have, what you have in here. And so on. You can, you can, uh, calculate different probability of errors, probability of all errors. You apply the rule also. This is what was the probability. 1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. If you apply the rule, you will see that this is exactly what you will, what you will get. Okay. So this was the uh, probability mass function of binomial. What's the mean and variance? Anas, go ahead. Uh, doctor, excuse me. For yes. The previous example, you put yeah. x equal to two, right? What's what? Uh, for the probability of x equal to two. Here you said four a factorial over two factorial multiplied by two factorial. Is yes. it two factorial multiplied by four factorial? No, n over x is what? n over x is n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial. Oh, okay, I see. Right? I forgot about the n minus x. Okay. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Okay, sure. Fine. For this same, uh, same example that I'm sending bits and I know that 10% of the time or 0.1, I will get the bit in error. If I tell you, I send or I will send 100 bits. How many bits in error you expect to have at the receiver? On average, if I'm sending 100 and you know that 10% usually are in error, probability of error is 0.1. 10. 10, right? 10 of 100. If I'm sending 1,000, on average, you would expect 100, right? So that's why the mean of the binomial distribution is simply given by n times p, where n is the number of tries and p is the probability of, of success. So if this is 100 and this is 0.1, then yes, the mean is is. 10. Again, how can you prove this? You can prove it using the rule or the definition of the mean that is summation of x, f of x, and you multiply x times f of x, and you, you solve it. You will get n, n, p. The variance, sorry, the variance of binomial distribution is given by nb times 1 minus 1 minus p. So let me put also, again, all of those formulas, you will have them in your formula sheet. But at least in this case, you can make sense of the mean. Why is it given by, by n, nb? So in the above example, let's calculate the mean and the variance. In the above example, mu equals what? Nb, which is 4 times 0.1, which is 0.4. And the variance, sigma square, is n, which is 4 times p, which is 0.1 times 1 minus 0.1, which can give you 0.3. 
also note which is very important again i wrote it above in binomial distribution number of tries is fixed number of successes is random while well, i'm saying and emphasizing this because next week on monday we talk about the geometric distribution in which the number of trials is random and the number of successes is is fixed so uh, always understand the random experiment that we are considering and then use the appropriate distribution to find its mean its variance and the different probabilities that that uh, you will come across across them so i think this is a good uh, point to stop at i will uh, log into blackboard to uh, enable your attendance One second so yep. also to your blackboard uh, so that you can check your attendance and then you can start your your uh, quiz doctor the uh, the midterm date time and location is confirmed now by email yes yes i asked uh Sijoy to, to to announce because we received the confirmation today from the because it will be on campus Uh, doctor, regardless, يعني, because today في مؤتمر بالليل, uh, they may they may close the malls and I'm not sure. يعني إذا مجلس وزراء ask us to not to come, I cannot over. إن شاء الله دكتور. يعني أنا واصل بس مو لهالدرجة. Okay, so شباب, I started the checking in. Please go to Blackboard and check in your attendance, and then at three exactly, the quiz starts. The quiz, you need to solve it on a piece of paper and then upload a PDF file or an image. You can upload it once. So make sure you upload it and you have until 3.17 maximum to upload your, your uh, solution. So, so f of x, I will ask you to validate if it's correct or not to calculate its mean and to find capital F of a certain value. 